<laughs> hey guys! Hey what's up guys, this is Two Awesome Men. Just in case you accidentally clicked on one of our videos and you didn't know that already, we are coming at you with a different kind of video uh, over some movies that we have seen that we believe are underrated films. Yeah, we believe that these movies aren't really talked about by a lot of people, but are actually pretty good movies and we would probably recommend them to pretty much anybody. And just so you know guys, we will be doing another video like this sometime in the future. So the movies on this list aren't going to be in any type of particular order. They're not going to be like the top 12 movies. Uh, they're going to be just 12 underrated movies that we feel like should be watched by more of the general audience. The first movie we have on this list is the movie The Gift. It is written, directed, and stars Joel Edgerton, as well as Jason Bateman and Rebecca Hall. And it is actually Edgerton's first movie to direct and write. And to be honest guys, this is actually pretty good for his first time. And not only for his first time, but just in general. The Gift is a thriller that's about a newlywed couple who move into a new house and while they're at the store they run into a man from the husband's past and after that they begin to have incidences that involve this old acquaintance. I like this movie because it's just beautifully directed and beautifully written and there's such a creepy feeling throughout this entire movie and such a big mystery on what happened in this husband and this guy's past. And the next movie I want to bring up is the movie Super 8, which is directed by J.J. Abrams. And this movie is about a group of kids who are trying to make a film. And during one of the shoots, in the background there is a train. And this train has a huge crash with this truck, almost killing these kids. And this leads to these huge amount of missing person reports and a whole bunch of strange events. This movie brings together two very great filmmakers, J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg. And one thing that I love about this movie is the fact that it got these kids who are just such great actors. And they really get us to care about all the characters in this movie. And it really gets us to fear about what's going on because we don't want anything bad to happen to these characters. For the third film on this list, we have A Law Abiding Citizen. This movie stars Gerard Butler, who at the beginning witnesses his wife and young daughter be brutally raped and murdered by two guys. And the guy who did most of these appalling crimes is let go by the American court system. So Gerard Butler's character decides to set a course for revenge on the court system and the lawyer played by Jamie Foxx, who he feels let him down. This movie's pretty great because you actually feel for Gerard Butler's character. He's doing some pretty messed up stuff, to be honest, on screen. But you, un you understand why he's doing it. And you feel sympathetic towards him. And this movie really shows you how broken the American court system really is. One comedy that I feel doesn't get enough attention is the movie Dinner for Schmucks, which is directed by Jay Roach. And this movie is about a guy played by Paul Rudd who is about to get a promotion at his job, but the only way he can get in with his superiors is to go to this party that they're going to host where he has to bring the stupidest person he can possibly find in order for all of the people at the party to make fun of these people, which they call dinner for schmucks. Now guys, I'm not going to lie, this movie may annoy the crap out of some people, but it really is just a fun and hilarious movie. But also, this movie is one of those movies where a whole bunch of bad things happened. But unlike a lot of movies and comedies where they have like what anything bad that can happen will happen, all of it is not a whole bunch of bad stuff that's crammed into this movie. It's a whole bunch of bad stuff that actually kind of smoothly goes together. And it kind of, a lot of it makes sense of why these things are happening. And this movie actually does get a little emotional with the character that Paul Rudd chooses uh, Steve Carell to bring to the party. And he really starts looking into his life and why he is the way he is and also uh, why his life has kind of gone bad because of how he is. Alright guys, the next one we have for y'all is a movie called Tucker and Dell vs. Evil. Now this is one that y'all definitely probably aren't going to expect going into it. 
It's a comedy that is a parody of normal teen slasher horror movies. And it's about two hillbillies who are actually pretty good people who are gonna get, take a vacation in their log cabin in the woods when they run into a group of college students who think that they are the stereotypical hillbilly serial killers and the college kids begin to hilariously kill themselves accidentally as they try to survive against these people who they think are crazy killers. And the reason why I like this movie is basically because of the description I just gave you. And since we're on the subject of underrated movies, I feel like I should choose one that also has, who in my opinion is a very underrated actor, Jake Gyllenhaal. And this movie is Southpaw, directed by Antoine Fuqua. And this movie is about a world famous undefeated boxer who after his wife is killed, he begins to constantly break down and his life begins to fall apart continuously. And this all leads to him losing custody of his daughter. And this makes him finally wake up and realize all of the bad stuff that he's been doing since his wife died. And so he begins a journey to not only get his daughter back, but gain her respect and her trust back as well. This movie is wonderfully acted by Jake Gyllenhaal. And his daughter is a very great actress as well. And one big thing that I love about this movie is it doesn't concentrate on the fact that he wants to become a big world famous boxer again. It more towards goes over how he really just wants his daughter back and her love back because after all this stuff that he's put her through after his wife has been killed, she just loses all respect in him. And he begins to just truly want that over his boxing life. The next one we have for you is the movie called Cloverfield. And this one is directed by Matt Reeves, who directed the new Planet of the Apes trilogy and is going to direct the new Batman solo movie. And it is about a group of mid 20 year olds who have a surprise leaving party for one of their friends when a giant monster attacks New York City where they're at. Most people talk about this movie because it is one of the first movies that uses the found footage style of filming um, like Blair Witch Project did it as well. But what gets overlooked is that this movie is actually a pretty decent monster movie on its own. They didn't show the monster too much to where you get used to seeing them and it also helps to build up this sense of fear because you're, you're with these characters and you feel their sense of hopelessness and not knowing what exactly is going on and they didn't show it too little which that's a common complaint that people have about this movie but I honestly don't feel like they showed it too little I actually rewatched it pretty recently because I wanted to see just how much they showed the monster and they actually showed it more than I even remembered and going back to the found footage aspect um, they actually did that pretty well because most found footage movies, especially nowadays, it doesn't make sense why exactly the person filming is filming. So it gets sort of awkward and it's sort of uncomfortable because you're like, why am I watching this? Why is this guy, why is this person filming this? But in Cloverfield, the person recording, which is actually played by uh, TJ Miller, uh, it actually made, they, they gave him a reason to be filming and it made sense. Another great movie to add to your list of must-see movies is the movie Seven Psychopaths, which stars Colin Farrell, Woody Harrelson, Sam Rockwell, and Christopher Walken. And this movie is about a struggling screenwriter, played by Colin Farrell, who is trying to write a movie called Seven Psychopaths. And his friend, played by Sam Rockwell, is trying to help him by putting out ads to interview actual psychopaths and creating inspirations for Colin Farrell's character through himself, which leads them to get tangled up with the criminal underworld of LA whenever Sam Rockwell's character decides to steal the beloved Shih Tzu of the crime boss played by Woody Harrelson. Did I say crime boss? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my goodness. Crime boss played by Woody Harrelson. Now this movie is hilarious and one thing I love is the fact that this movie is so hard to fully explain and go into depth because it's a very confusing plot to explain but it's so interesting and by the end of it you fully 
see everything that's going on and it just happens so smoothly and it's just such a phenomenal movie. Now the ninth movie in our list is Looper, directed by Rian Johnson, the guy who's going to be directing Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. This movie is about a time where crime bosses in the future, whenever they want to kill a target, they send him back in time using a time traveling device and they have hired men in the past to kill these targets and dispose of the body since these bodies technically do not exist in that time period. But things go out of whack whenever one of these hired men in the past, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, is hired to kill his future self, played by Bruce Willis, but he fails and his future self gets away. So he sets off to find his future self and make everything right. Now, Looper isn't exactly your normal time travel movie. Uh, there, it definitely has a unique story. It's not a typical person who has a time machine goes in time or in the future or anything. It has a very unique, thought-provoking plot. And the way they reveal things throughout this movie is pretty great. It creates suspense and drama throughout the entire movie. And when they finally do reveal these certain things, it's such a pleasing moment. And then the ending is probably one of my favorite endings for a movie. Now the buddy cop genre obviously has the tits and misses, but one movie from that genre that I really feel like it didn't get the love it fully deserved was The Other Guys, which stars Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. And without revealing too much, this movie is about two mediocre desk cops who see an opportunity to become the city's top cops, which they try their best to take advantage of. Now this movie isn't just one of my favorite buddy cop movies, but it's actually one of my favorite comedy movies because a lot of the jokes in this movie are just so ridiculous and outlandish that it seems like they wouldn't be funny in some movies, but this movie really knows how to use these jokes to be hilarious. And another thing is a lot of these jokes are used multiple times and it seems like they would kind of be like, okay, you don't need to use it that many times, but something about this movie also uses those jokes correctly to where Every time they use them, they just get funnier and funnier. Speaking of buddy cop movies, I'm going to bring up a movie that's not called The Other Guys, but it's called The Nice Guys. This movie stars Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe, who both play private eyes who are investigating the disappearances and deaths of people involved in the filming of a porno. And the two are unconventionally brought together to solve this mystery that turns out to be the mystery of the century. The writing of this movie is so beautiful because there's so many tiny little pieces that you have to really pay attention to throughout this entire movie because by the end of it, it they all pretty much tie together pretty perfectly. And the comedy that they have is definitely one of the best I've seen in a movie. Now our next and last movie of this list is probably one of my favorite movies of all time, which is the movie Swiss Army Man, which stars Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe. And this movie is about a guy who is stranded on an island who is about to hang himself before he sees a dead body wash up on shore, which he begins to realize is actually very much alive, and he can use his body to do practically anything, which he uses to help him find his way back home. Now just a big warning, this movie is very different. It's probably one of the most unconventional movies I've seen in a while. Uh, this movie though is one of the deepest movies I've seen. It uses very lame jokes and very basic humor to actually have a message come across to the audience. And there's so much more to be said about this movie that it's actually hard to just fully say a summary of it. And this is definitely one of the most original movies I've ever seen. So if you actually want to see a really good original movie, I would highly recommend this. There we go. Okay. It worked on! <laughs> Wait, we have to do the closing remarks. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, comment below and let us know whether or not you agree with our list. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Two Awesome Men. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us later.